So in this video, I need to describe the accessories I fitted to my own telescope that offer enhanced performance and excellent value for money. There's no endorsement. These are things that I found work well for me after countless hours at night in the dark at the eyepiece or imaging the moon and the planets. So good afternoon and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. My name is Mark Radici and I'm setting up under a beautiful summer's evening sky, getting ready for a night of observing. So as I'm getting the telescope ready, I'm going to talk you through the accessories and the upgrades I put on this telescope. So the first thing we have to do is put the dew cover on, the dew shield. Take the dust cover off, on goes the dew shield. And I would say with our damp UK climate, this is absolutely essential. I've lost nights of observing due to dew, and since we've got this, it's been much better. As the air temperature drops at night, you can feel the humidity rising. And without this on to shield the optics, you soon fog over with the dew. The other thing I put on is a dew controller, a four channel dew controller, and I've got a dew heater in there around the corrector plate and I have another one down for the eyepiece end as well and without these I say I used to lose nights of observing after a few hours everything was dripping with dew including the optical surfaces but with the dew shield and with the heater just keeping it gently warm just a few degrees above ambient just to stop the heat forming it makes the world of difference. You can buy a dew shield or make one out of thin plastic as I've done on the finder scope so down at the eyepiece end, I've put a Crayford focuser, which has the 10 to 1 fine focus. But when I was getting into observing the moon and the planets a few years ago, I didn't have one of these on my little 6 inch Mac. So I bought a peg. And if you put that over the focus wheel, you get really fine 10 to 1 focus control. And what's really cool about this is that because it's on that peg with the long lever you can touch it and get that fine control but also the vibrations don't go through to the eyepiece as much so you actually get pretty smooth focus without that view jiggling around and you can put this on whichever focus wheel you want and get that fine focus since then I've put a Skywatcher autofocuser on and this is worth its weight in gold. I think it's absolutely invaluable. It's so wonderful to have hands-free, vibration-free focus. And you can really see just when the stars or the faint planetary moons or features in the crater just come into sharp focus. Put that down. So I'm really enjoying using my bino here. It's a lovely way to observe. You've got the pleasure of using both eyes. And I've also put on, you'll see this in my binocular video, a bino bandit. Now I need to go and buy a second one because I'm swapping from the binoculars to the bino viewer so I can have one on here permanently. But this is really effective. It's one of these accessories that seems to punch so far above its weight. Because it blocks all the peripheral light out from the sides. So when you're observing, it's nice and dark. So the other radar I find works really well is a hoodie. And that works in a similar way. Not only does it keep you warm at night, and if you put the hood up, that keeps your head warm. But again, that also blocks off the stray light. Right, so you may have noticed the telescope has a space blanket. So this is designed to help reduce tube current. So what happens when the telescope's outside at night it's radiating whatever warmth it has up into the cold of the upper atmosphere, whatever that is, minus lots of degrees. That then cools the tube, and the tube then has air currents flowing down inside it, that cold air descending down through the optical part. So by putting a space blanket on, you help alleviate tube currents. And it seems to work. My sort of anecdotal evidence, on the nights of good seeing, I certainly have a reduction in tube currents. Another one of those accessories that seems to punch above its weight. Now, talking of sharp views, you definitely need to ensure your scope is collimated. 
and I upgraded the original collimation screws to these little thumb screws from Bob's Knobs. And I don't miss holding an Allen wrench next to the corrector plate in the dark while watching a star on the eyepiece. It's one of those affordable upgrades that seems to make a world of difference and it only takes a matter of moments to swap the knobs over and then you have tool-free collimation. Now the next upgrade is not really a telescope, it's more the mount. The Skywatcher mount comes with a clunky ancient technology hand controller that works just fine but you've got to type the date in, you've got to type the time in and then you're constrained by the cord lengths. I'd have this cord trailing across to the mount so I upgraded to the SynScan Wi-Fi and I set up now using an old iPhone and control the mount over Wi-Fi. I've got no vibration going through to the mount and I've got no risk of cord wrap. And I also can be anywhere in the observatory and still control the telescope. So there you have it, accessories that don't cost a fortune but greatly enhance the observing experience. Now, of course, you may have your own ideas and recommendations, so please share them in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe, and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky. So, without a shadow of a doubt, you can't go observing without a mug of tea. <laughs>